Audio Frontier. Ladies and gentlemen, the following podcast is Wrestling Death and is scheduled for one hour. Maybe more. It has no real time limits making their way into your ears. First, from a place called Barniston, he is the Pyramid. It's going to be the funniest show ever because I'm all about the comedy and the money, money. baby. How much you gonna pay? And his partner, be the top end of Stevenson. From Mexico City to Beef Community Centre, I've got stories that are going to blow your mind. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Wrestling Daft. My name's Rab Florence. We are deep in the pandemic and who better to ride through a pandemic than my brother, Grado, sitting opposite me. How you doing? Well, he's not sitting opposite me. How you doing, Grado? All right, brother. Uh, I've missed you. I missed you last week, man. Busy, busy week. No wheel. Everything kicking off. I'm crab it. Lockdown's really getting to me. I'm fucking driving myself up the wall. I'm driving every other kid up the wall. Is it getting to you, mate? Is it like, you, you're a guy that needs to be out and about, didn't you? Aye. Well, do you know what? It was one of the days where I was working pure hard. I was, it was like back in the days when I was in this company in America called... Oh, um, aye, I think I've heard about this. What's the, what, what's the name again? It doesn't matter, but basically, you know, I would... Fly in at four bells in the morning, nine hour flight, wait two hours in the airport, then go to the fire brigade at seven days day shift, then go and do fucking Johnson Toon Hall on a Saturday night, you know, then day day shift again, then Sunday night I'd wrestle in Claybank Toon Hall, maybe get Monday half. In fact, no, I'd work Monday night shift. So for the last wee while, it's no been that busy. So I'm getting just to swing it. But now that I'm right into it, I'm getting to be a crab bastard. I'm starting on folk. I mean, I went in to get... By the way, I've just started drinking Mad Dog. Wait, wait you started drinking the new? No, in this, like this podcast, weekend, or even yeah. just in life? In life? I've, I've basically had you? four bottles since the weekend. Um, and like when I was going to get it, it was by one a day, you know, just to get essential. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, was, I had the right away for the car park, and this old guy peeped me. And I attempted to fuck off, and I felt bad after it. But it was the, it was a wee, there was a wee, there was a wee head in the back seat that kind of there was smoking a fag, and he looked solid. So I thought, right, well, if he starts, he's getting it too. And uh, I come back out, and he peeped his son at me again. I went, fucking morning. I felt bad. Then in Tesco today, Rob, um, I was just getting uh, pickles. I was getting a jar of pickles, and a woman. Uh, I, I totally forgot the arrow thing. I, I'm not getting it. I know it's bad, mm-hmm. um, but she went. Excuse me, the arrows are pointing the other direction. You're walking down the wrong way. I, 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 I go kind of embarrassed. I, oh, I, 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 so, so sorry, sorry, sorry. At the same time, I wanted to throw the fucking jar of pickles off her face, but you know, you've got to do it at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it's my, that was my fault. I learned it was a learning curve for me. Do you know what I mean? So I should have been taking it out on her. I need to thank her for doing that and thank you for her preventing the virus being spread. Aye. Well, I was doing the call there. I was doing the call just before this show, doing a co-op, and there was no social distancing thing going on. Like, they had marks on the flare, and everybody was just walking by each other. Everybody was just right up close to each other. Just It was just a free-for-all. I, like, I had my mask on. I was wearing my mask. You, were you, are you wearing Have you got the mask? About? You would, I can imagine you love wearing a mask outside. I do. It's because you're into Prince and all that. You probably like Michael Jackson. I bet you love doing shit like that. I'm into it. I quite like it. What about you, though? Are you wearing a mask when you're out about? My fuck. No, nah. no, that's I shouldn't say it like that, but I just I kind of got hold of one. Where am I going? Put I put my ranger scarf in me or something. So I uh, I go I was out with my mask, but it was just a free for all. People were standing right there and kind of walking right past me, you know. And ah, you do yeah. feel you feel you get angry, mate. Like see when you're out and you're trying to you're trying to follow all the rules, not and then somebody just walks up right close to you. you feel yeah, you feel like not I'm fucking out. You feel like no, I mean somebody went and them shoot them my horn. Somebody shoot my horn, Gredo, mate, and I. You're joking. Fuck, I done it back and Stephanie, my girlfriend, was like, what you doing? I was like, I fucking don't even know why I done that. I was raging. I was just raging at myself. Yeah. I was raging at him. And the best it is, you know, it says only minimum, minimum of, maximum of two people in a show. There was fucking seven or eight. Buying pot noodles and Milky Ways. What show was this? Uh, no, because I need to go in there later for a bottle of my dog. 
Ah, but just just to just, <laughs> what kind of shop was it? Is it a supermarket? No, it was like a convenience store. A wee convenience store, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I, can, I suppose I can get it because they, so they have a one way system in the convenience store about how you move through. You're not giving a fuck. All right, that was just a free for all in there. Uh, they, uh, even the garages and stuff like that feels as if they don't care. Mate, I've just got a bad feeling that we're all going to get wiped out. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. That's a, a nice wee <laughs> cheery opening to the show for Grado mm-hmm. there. Um, well, it has been a dark, dark week in, in wrestling. I mean, what is going on, man? You, you've got, obviously, you've got the, well, a lot of I, pals that are in the game. I had a busy, busy day, the day that it releases. And I just kept getting text after text after text after text. And obviously, I'm in a big group chat with quite a lot of the boys in the Fed. And it was just a matter of like, who was like, yep, got the phone call. Wish I hadn't answered my phone. Like, I'm released to, I'm released to, I'm released to. And it was a actual horrible, horrible feeling. Spud's video had me in tears. Um, I like EC3's reaction. He's you know, went about it the right way. He's cool as fuck. I don't know why he's no. He, you know what I mean? See, when I see some of the people that are on Ron Smackdown and EC3 isn't on the telly, it does man nothing. I think he's he's got so much charisma. He's he's fucking brilliant. I've been wondering about that myself because he, he he is. He's like a good talker. He's got a cracking look. Oh, he um, looks he looks tremendous, mate. He looks tremendous. I think to, uh, I think to an outsider though, like I think somebody when they're on the outside looking in, they think to themselves sometimes. Times when, um, when there's somebody who who seems to be the package and it's no happening for them, they think it must be something to do with them backstage. No, he's brand new. It must be like a personality. He was a locker room. Room. He, he was a locker room leader in TNA at one point. Him and Matt. Him and so, Matt were the two boys. So he's a good mm-hmm. guy as well. Mm-hmm. So what's the deal then? What, Very what good guy. What is going? I have on? no idea. He, but he's been fucked about right for the start. I feel. Mm-hmm. He fucked about, fucked about, fucked about. They should have put Spud as his manager and uh, rolled with that because they get great chemistry together. They had it in TNA, but of course it's the same as usual. If it's no Vince's creation, he's not interested. In it. What a ruthless motherfucker! You can even see it when you watch um, the Jimmy Snooker documentary when he's trying to pay off families. You know, don't grass and snooker and there's a few bob. Do you know what I mean? Mm. He's ruthless VKM, and a lot to do with it as well is like the money that he's donated. To well, I don't know if it's all true, but donating money to Trump and all this and XFL and stuff like this. Obviously, the look, Illuminati hundreds of people are losing their jobs. Hundreds of people are losing their jobs. It's not just wrestlers. Do you know what I mean? We've got to remember it's not just wrestlers being affected. You know what I mean? I had a very, very emotional conversation where I he survived it. But like, I c- you could just hear him greeting down the fucking phone to me. It was fucking hot. Horrible, do you know what I mean? Just because a lot of his mates were away. A lot of his mates are away, mate. A lot of his mates are away. They're just out of job, and it's like, well, what happens? No, no and there's not going to be money. Wait, hold on, just to there's clarify, no did, did he rift when he was saying that, or was that were you quoting him, or is that you rifting as your? Ah, uh, he, yeah. he 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 rifted, so I was qu- quoting him. Um, a Finley, a guy like Finley getting getting released. Finley, do you know what I mean? Like fit Finley. Oh, come on. He's what? been at it for fucking for two hundred years. I'm sure he's got enough fucking money. No, I know, but what I'm meaning is, he's nah, like, I don't think he likes me, so it doesn't matter. But I sorry if it, if you're listening, sorry you lost your job, mate. But he has had a, a big impact on uh, WWE. Impact. You know what I mean, big impact on WWE on, on the ladies uh, and the ladies side of things. A lot of people, will, a lot of people will say that um, you know he's a big factor behind the women's revolution. Not to take anything away for the women, but certainly in terms of like a backstage guy who, um, you know, is helping bring women up to a certain standard and stuff like that. Who maybe you know uh, had, no, had the training that some of the other women have had. You know, great for the women's division. And I was they being sexist there. It just does sound like when Mate, uh, the women are wrestling, it sounds like a tennis match. I see, Fit Finley walked into your fucking Houston. I fucking, ju- I fucking sitting on him. I take, I, I take this bottle of Corona. By the way, ironic that I'm drinking Corona, but. No, I'd fad shit myself on day one. He would wreck you, mate. He would wreck you, mate. I think he would. He would. He'd fling your head so fucking far, mate. It would come smashing no, through my living room. I think he, I think he would come at me so confidently, right? So confidently with his aims out that I'd just put him in his balls. No, see, I think, see, I think Fit Finlay, I think you would try and boot him in his boys and his reactions would be so fast, mate. He'd just kick your wee ankle, right? And your wee boot would just go flying right out the fucking window. Your, your fit would come half your leg. You didn't even know that could happen. You didn't even know that you could get booted that hard that your fit separates from your ankle, did you? Aye, let's face it. If me and Fit Finley come to blows, I'm going to fucking self-combust, aren't I? 
Number Can you say can bust? Let's go to the correspondence for the punters out there. Do we need to? Listen, punters, you just need to get in touch and let us know what ways you think Fit Finley would batter Grado. How would, how, how would Fit Finley batter uh, uh, Grado? I remember one time um, I was sitting in the hotel waiting on a couple of WWE wrestler pals and I was sitting at the Radisson and he was looking for somewhere to sit and, I, and it was where I was sitting. And he hung around, I'm not, I'm not sitting there. He probably seen my entrance or documentary and thinks he's a, he probably thinks I'm a prick. Maybe I'm wrong. Did they actually, see all these wait, fucking indie, sh- all these indie shows now? I go, I go back. I'll bump into him every two minutes. And I'll get my fucking nose burst every time I see him. All Did he actually shows. say that? Did they say I'm not sitting there when he saw you? Aye, aye, basically. Jeez, oh, jeez, oh, mate. Right. Oh, and uh, I feel bad for Big Carol Anderson because we had a fucking riot a weekend in Vegas a couple of months ago. Oh, that's, right. that's right. Aye. You'll know be wearing their WrestleMania jumper anymore. Thong man. It says, we a recent mention of Mental Hulk Hogan tweets, I feel some attention needs to be brought to the time he gave a shout out to the fucking Peel Bar in Drum <laughs> Chapel. My favourite tweet of That's all time. fucking brilliant. Peel Glen Bar. This was his tweets. This, this is tweet. his tweet. Peel Glen Bar, Hulkamaniacs. Drink one for me, brothers. That's brilliant. Hulk Hogan. That's every time, brilliant. see every time Hulk Hogan does a tweet, mate, right? Uh, and he does that HH at the end. Mm-hmm. I like to imagine myself he's saying I know hail, what hail. you think he's going to say he's saying hail hail so he ah, goes Peel f- Glen Bar Hulkamaniacs <laughs> drink one for me brothers hail hail it's a good Tim bar isn't it um, the Peel Glen I'm the going to need Austin who has been pictured in a Rangers tap to get WATP at the end of his no um, Austin's not a Rangers fan right ah, thanks yes. to our friend Neil Gow who tweeted as after noticing there's a pet food named after Kashida and wondered if there was any other examples no John I don't want any Mary nonsense I don't want I feel as if this is becoming a low brow. Is it degrading us? Crashy wrestling. But listen to this Bionic Elmo Tommy Dreamies. I don't get it. This is like, because it's pet food. Oh, um, fucking hell. Why can't you just say pedigree chum, Triple H's finisher? That's all you need. Pedigree champa. Oh. Rubbish, right? Well, so does champa want- do the pedigree? I don't want any more of this. Is every cunt or dog did the pedigree now then? I, I take so, it. Oh, away. no, no. It's just that's pedigree chum, pedigree chum. All oh, right. So he's done better than me. Well done. No, no. Yours is better. Yours oh, is better. Is. Yours is better. Already. Anyway. Right, sorry, Chris. I don't, we don't want any more of this. Don't send us <laughs> any of this crap. After right. Rabble Root, after Rab revealed last week, that's me, by the way, that his childhood wrestler name is the Shadow Master and his finish was a total eclipse. A few people have shared their aim. Westy was Josie, who was a very naughty schoolgirl, and the finisher was the. Tr- Trip to the heads. Well, a variation Louise, of the I don't know who this is. This will be Louise. It's good to know that's what you got up to back in the day. No, no, no. Stephen Dunn was the Dunster and finishing move the can opener, basically just grabbing their fit and twisting it. Then upgraded that to the walls of Jericho. He then knocked somebody's move. We were also talking last week, by the way. Listen, you just shouldn't have been doing backyard wrestling anyway. I was, you know I was, mean? I was doing backyard wrestling at the back door in my grand's house with my fucking grand's pillars, and I was badass Mike Austin, Steve Austin's brother. Badass Mike Austin, <laughs> yeah, is that right. true? And I came out to <laughs> what song did I use? I used a mud vein song, dig, ding, 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 and I used to smash a glass bottle of iron brew after flare and blade myself at my grand's back door. What? And fucking roll about our grass, man. We bleed, we blood running down my fucking head, and then I'd. Um, run back through because obviously her chair was like facing the telly so I'd run around and go and wash all the blood away and all that and then that was the end of the wrestling game finished what? by yourself? Aye. see when I was back yard and I was doing it with other people by the way it was real fighting oh I I actually mean. but nowadays this is why they say that Grado could now they could say that Ric Flair could wrestle a broom and make Aye. it work they say that Grado could wrestle a, a pillow one of his granny's pillows <laughs> and make it work <laughs> I mean that's what they say I put them uh, we were also talking last week about Booker T Dana signing with his wife at the Spa and View Park. Stephen has what? sent through the proof from the Motherwell <laughs> Times. Mate, I can give you one better than that. I wish there was a 40. I wish there was a 40, isn't it? 40. Uh, There's a photo. Where? Scroll down. No way. I'm scrolling down, but the photo's not showing up. It's just oh. Motherwell. Aye. It's just well, Mother- um, there will be proof of China doing a book signing in Nando's in Aberdeen. A book signing in Nando's? Poor China, by the way. Poor China. Right, Wally Bone backs this up, by the way. The Booker T. Wally Bone, I like that one. Through, and, and Wally Bone says that Booker T was fucking raging. He won it in the spa. Maybe a Nisa or a fucking... Aye. J- uh, Brett, J- Brett Lowry. J- you know Brett Lowry, mate? Gredo. 
he Aye. he's got an example in another wrestler doing a signing at Spa. He says, I know that John Morrison and Molina did a signing in Aberdeen's Spa. A spa Aye, in Aberdeen. I was there. Why is this why is this happening? Why is this a thing? A lot of them, a lot of the Aberdonian guys, they like to get like weird places for the guys that they get, you know, they'll get like fucking um Horns will go today, like a sign in at the Biffy King and all that. That's just weird up there. <laughs> <sighs> Bloody Aberdonians, man. Paul Laird has something for us as well when he says it. When WWE were in Glasgow a while ago, Cesaro was in Sports Direct. My best mate was. Oh, there boo! At the time. My best mate was. Fucking there funding at the time. me, Ashley. Get, get us to f- please delete this. And slipped a security tag into Cesaro's bag to set off the alarm when he left. <laughs> Well, good. I've heard that he's. I've heard that uh, Sports Direct's been absolutely robbed. Hunters are merchandise has been stolen for their one of their shops. So, good on whoever done that. I'm, nah, I'm kidding on that. I've got a lot of respect what? for Mike Ashley. I bet you do. You can't. I like the way he looks for struggling clubs and kind of tries to give him a wee horn. No, I, mean, I like that. If you if, listen, if you want to get in touch with us about any of that, I'll just random wrestling related stuff. Get us on Twitter at Wrestling Daft, on Insta at Wrestling Daft Podcast, and just Wrestling Daft on Facebook or email Wrestling Daft at gmail.com. Oh, Rob, you love this uh, bit of part that John is putting for you for the body put over. Oh, no, here. sorry, I've no changed it from this week. I've no changed it from oh, this well, week. Oh, well, that I missed it last week. I need to hear again how terrible it is. Every week, it for me again, Rob. No, every week we like to separate the good for the bad, the coronavirus for the corona beer, which, by the way, Grado's drinking just now. <laughs> corona beer. As we bury and put our stuff for the world of pro wrestling. What you want to bury and what you want to put all this week, Grado? Because I know you've been watching a lot of wrestling. What uh, you want to bury and what you want to put over? I want to bury Jimmy Snicker for killing a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... I want to put over um, just myself, probably, actually, I Put on myself. Put on myself this week. I've done well. I've been working hard. Mate, you put, I'm putting on myself. You put yourself there every week. Yeah, I, want to, especially. I want to bury the WWE. I, here's what I want to bury. I want to bury the, fa- the, the corporate face of the WWE. You know how that, the WWE kind of did us hang now, like... Triple H and Stephanie and Vince and all that, well, they're like, we're nice. We're nice. They do, you know, we're nice. You know, I want to bury that. Aye, we, what, um, ch- the charity, would you call Aye, it? We did charity. Make we did this foundation. We'll make John Cena come and all that. And fucking... This foundation, that foundation. And when it comes to the crunch and a, a global crisis lands and with a, with a company that, that, that could afford to keep people employed and give people a wee bit of security through a difficult period, they, they bin them. They then you sound like a mark saying that because you don't know what they're going through money wise. But well, you've got shares in fucking WWE, you know better than us actually. So I take that mate, back. Listen, mate, listen. I know that they have enough money to keep the employees. They, they've got enough money to keep the employees with a, a wage coming in over these uncertain times. There are, if there's cuts yes. they want to make, there are cuts they can make elsewhere, and we know they are, mate. We know they are. No, <clears throat> I'm no burying, but I'm no getting into the politics nor that. Yeah, what, what I'm saying is, I want to bury this. Uh, this this myth that the WWE projects about themselves that they're they're good guys. We know they're no. It's a wrestling business. Anybody in the wrestling business has got a side of sleaze to them. The whole business has got a side of sleaze to it. So there's no. I don't want people kidding on like, oh, we're lovely and we're good and we did this and we did that and we're, we're for families. No, we're not shite. wrestling. We're entertainment. Exactly. It's a lot of shit. Um, and I want to put over. What do I want to put over? I want to put over Jimmy Snooker for killing a woman. No, no, no. I'm no, 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 no that, no that. I want to put over just the the, the general attitude of the people who were released and who are now looking forward to better times. Obviously, Big Rusev get released. I'm going to put our Big Rusev because he no, but he get released and he just you know he's just he's taking it. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next because he's got to be the hottest property. I think you pure love him, man. I love Rusev. I love Rusev. Um, Paul wants to put over Rab. Paul got in touch. Wants to put over Rab. He was fantastic on the last podcast. Clearly loves his wrestling. Knowledgeable and measured on his thoughts and delivery of opinion. Really enjoyed listening to him last week. To be honest, I think he loves wrestling. Melvin Gradle. Oh, Melvin. 
Where do fucking bury me? He wants to bury Nia Jax. Clumsy, sloppy, dangerous and arrogant. Look, I hate this guy. Look at who was released last week and Nia Jax is still there, Paul. You know your stuff. I do love wrestling. Last week I did get into a wee bit, yeah, you know, I was, I, was, I was very emotional last week. Liam Wiseman, who's a current wrestling daft champion, he's, he wants to bury all the WWE releases. Have they not been through enough? Jesus. Um, he wants to bury all of them just so that Vince can give Trump 18 million and keep crossing swords with him in the White House. Kludgy pants run their ankles. Total fuds. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? And he, he wants to put out AEW, Dustin Rhodes, will he retire or no? Great stuff for your man. Where did they record? Sorry. Sorry, Grey, do you need to let me finish a sentence? Ah, I, do, gonna, I do, I no, do, I no, do. No, but you're not going to believe how it ends. Right. Go, listen, go to put out AEW. Dustin Rhodes, will he retire or no? Great stuff from a man that almost had titties. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what are they doing with EW? Uh, they're still, got, I mean, they're still running, aren't they? Still... I bet they, they're doing it in a big, they're doing it like the SEC kind of thing, or they're doing it out some cunt's back door? They're, they're doing it just um, behind closed door shows. Right. They're pre-recorded for five weeks. They're, up there, yeah. they're pretty well, well in advance. All right. All right, yes. <laughs> uh, Chris wants to put out, and you've heard a lot about this on this show already, the Vice Dark Side of Wrestling series. The Brawl for All episode last week it was, was brilliant. Great. I recommended it to my, to my brother. And I says, look, I know you hate wrestling, but go and watch a series. I says, watch the Brawl for All one first. He was going, and he came, he came back, he went, he went, I was fucking brilliant. I was fucking great. No, I loved that fucking wrestle guy, he was fucking, bro. He wasn't giving a fuck, giving a fucking wrestling fucking lot of shit. No, he was a fucking wanker. That Jim Cornetto, he was a <laughs> fucking pleb. He was a fucking dafty. Have they got Cornetto on it? I've not watched this yet. Is Cornetto on it? I, I, if you didn't like wrestling, you'd probably think he was a gimp, but if it gave me gooses what he was saying. Ugh, bloody Cornetto, man. Can he go on? Uh, and Chris wants to bury Nia Jax as well. Still doing dangerous moves well above her skills. Buckle bomb to Kyrie saying on Monday was brutal. I know she's the Rock's pal, but somebody's going to get really hurt bad. <laughs> All right, well, listen. I think people are a bit hard on Nia Jax. You know what I mean? Uh, sometimes I... Oh, I don't know. Do you know think that sometimes when people think that Nia Jax is, isn't he working safe, that... That she's worked, that she's working people. Do you know how they matches are worked to wind people up? Because I looked at that buckle bomb on a uh, Kyrie saying, and that could have been, that could have been worked. That you know what I mean? Of course, that didn't look like it didn't look like a, a, a you just because people are used to seeing buckle bombs and used to seeing them playing out in a certain way doesn't necessarily mean in that match and that particular hangman that wasn't a pre-planned spot. Exactly. It's like that. How would you call her? It's like Ronda Rousey with Miff Guild. Um, thing there. Shayna Baszler. Baszler. Uh, she done a hit a what thing where it looked like she was batting somebody's fucking face in, and it was a work. You know what I mean? She's no safe. All well, that stuff. She's no safe. She's no safe. She's no Listen, safe. Listen, who gives a fuck? It's wrestling. It's no ballet. You fucking idiots. We don't all slap our legs. You pair of pussies. <laughs> <laughs> fucking idiots. This is exactly my point. I quite like seeing this big woman just like flinging. These, Aye, these I'm sure she got fucking paid. I'm sure she slapped about this Kyra saying whatever. I'm sure she was happy with a fucking ten grand a week getting slapped about off a bigger woman. Who gives a fuck? Get out of it. There's a postman. <laughs> Goshi says, "Bury me and Jacks." What Don't she did do to, that. What she did to Kyra saying she could have ended her career constantly hopping wrestlers. Shut up. And put her Big Drew and Asuka. Both of them have been outstanding recently, thriving even without the crowds. Big Drew is looking the he, he's he's looking right with that belt on his waist. Let me tell Stop you something. Stop worrying about wrestlers getting injured and folk being safe. That's no your issue. That's no if there's some there they'll deal with it. That's no your problem to worry about if they're getting injured or no. If it's that much a problem, she wouldn't be on the telly. Put it that way. Trust me, I've been there. When somebody's dangerous, they're ten half TV. She's no fucking dangerous. Andy wants to put her Cesaro. That man can do anything. Can he bake a sourdough bread off his scratch? That's what Jen, my fiance, can do. I don't think I'm not sure Cesaro could do that. Big E, I love Big E. Rab for actually turning up to last week's podcast. Oh, that's rude, isn't it? Um, and he wants to bury um, 
sorry, it was just a delivery coming. It wants to bury, uh, I don't really have much to bury, so I'm going to bury John for a laugh. Our producer, John, hey. you got buried. Oh, John got buried. John got buried. John so got buried. He's spelling, he's spelling but shit, but finally, I mean, finally somebody's buried him. Um, social distancing. I'm just sometimes delivery guys come to my door just as I'm recording this. Just now, the delivery guy just came to my door, and I'm always right. getting the evil eye going, Stay away from my family. I'll fucking kill no, you. No, it's, it's, it's when they step. Well, I get Amazon deliveries, and the, the guy needs to take a photo of it standing at my front door. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I get down to my knees and get the guns out and, that and let him take a photo of me with my tap off. Get the Shawn Michaels on the go. Aye, the Shawn Michaels boys. Yeah, I just oh. Craigie, big Craigie wants to bury Hans Gruber, a.k.a. Vince McMahon, for having money in the bank at WWE headquarters and being a money-grabbing bastard. No, did you did you see this this Money in the Bank match that's going to be all the way up? Time I am excited off. for that. I saw my, who is it? I think it's single has already been taped. Sounds like something you would do with your wrestling figures. It's uh-huh. like some laugh, I'm into it. That's the kind of thing they should be doing. Just wonder what rooms are going to go into and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Aye, I know. And, yeah, I wonder if, like, and if it's changed since uh, he's got a, he's got a puke in that big room. Yep, yep. And what it was about... good to see draws on that, that side of the room, room that oh, side he, of the ring. Is he, is he on that? Uh, he, was on, uh, he was on the Brawl for All episode. How's he doing? He is got, he, he right? got off a kick and an awe. He got a fucking what up face. Um, nobody wanted to date me. Nobody, nobody was, the reason why they done it was because Vince Russo was pissed off. He heard in GBA walking about backstage, thinking he's a way going, I can take any crap on in here. See if, this was a real, see if this was a real job. So Vince Russo made it just to see Bradshaw get a down. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he done it. I, can't, I need to watch this. And how do you see this? Just on the Vice website? You'll get it somewhere in my YouTube Vice. No worries. Um, Sean wants to put over the Young Bucks for the ridiculous match against each other on being the Elite 200. Love the homage to HBK throwing Jeanette through the barbershop window. No burying anything this week because I don't watch any of the weekly shows. Um, I've had enough burying putting over. Come on, let's talk about something else. All right, I'll, let me give you one, Mel. Let me yeah, give you okay. one, Mel. Um, a friend of the show, Sean McLaughlin, I want to go to, he'd like to bury the recent trend of mixing wrestling with ongoing politics. Wrestling is meant to be entertaining and for some an escape from reality. It doesn't feel like it with wrestlers and fans forcing their political beliefs <laughs> upon you constantly. <laughs> That's funny, Sean, you again. Uh, Sean, oh, that's the other, aye. Sean sounds, is it, see, I think sometimes when people say keep politics out of it means they're a Tory, doesn't it? It means they're like no, a right winger. They love Trump. Sean's just a fucking gossip. Sean, stop being a wee gossip. Sean, stop being a gossip, mate. Sean, yes, I'm getting on it. Sean, stop being. Stop worrying about politics, mate. Just, just count the free. Just count the fucking free, mate. Maybe he'll hate that I'm saying this. He'll hate that I'm saying this. Maybe it's the people that you're following. Maybe it's the people because I haven't seen anybody talk about it. I haven't had any political beliefs put upon me. All and I've Dean wants and, and Dean wants to put over Gredo's girlfriend for saying he looks like an old pervert with his bum bag on. Well, I do, <laughs> but I feel like a, feel like a worker. Do you wear your bum bag every day? Uh, not every day, but most days. When have I do my worker work, when I'm hunting. Have you got See, it on the Have you got it on the now? No, because I'm not hunting today. But when I'm hunting and I can feel hang season up, I put my bum bag on and I put on my worker work. You know, worker walk as it's just basically we just I walk hop. with a limp and we have one back, so it looks like you hobble a boot. You do aye, I hobble a boot and aye. The way the Undertaker walks now, kind of goes aye. side to side aye. like that. Aye. Like one of the wind up penguins, you get out of the wee toy shops, now the wee wind up the wee plastic ones, and they kind of walk like that. Exactly like side that. Side to side, so we guy. You just made the list. Now it's time for something me and Grado are really going to enjoy. It's the list of wrestling daft, and it's the best current wrestling themes. Now, this week on our Patreon, we asked for you guys to vote on this list, right? Remember, you can vote by signing up for $4 a month, and we give you a choice. You want to hear a list of the best themes in wrestling, or one about the best finishers in wrestling, and clearly, he's all into your music, because 71% of you said that he's wanted to hear about the themes. Oh, top three themes. It's, no, normally what happens is I name my top three themes, but Grado's an entrance theme, man. Grado's I'm an entrance theme. What are your favourites, Grado? What are your right, favourites? Okay. Just Enter point Sandman. Point, before you before you start, Grado, it's the themes in wrestling today, not of all time. So it's. Oh, well, I don't like any of the wrestling theme. songs of all time. They're, they're all shite. I mean, right. 
And they sound the same. The only ones I really like, right, here we go. I'm raging that it's 71% why did the current themes because other current themes are shite and they all sound the same and I can't get into any of them. Well, do all the is all right, AJ Styles is all right, but I mean, come on, back in the day, Enter Sandman, Disturbed, Glass Shattered, um, Evolution, or Batistas, or If You Smell, you know what I mean? Fuck the new ones, new ones are shite. What about Bam, Bam? I'm an ass man. Bro, I came out to that once wearing Mr. That's uh, right, so you did. Gear. I wore Mr. Arsie's gear. Where was this? You did this? What promotion was it? IPW UK. I think I spoke about it before, I told you. You told me, it was two weeks ago, you told me, I think. Aye, uh, I'm not talking about it again. Why? I like it. Uh, right, okay, I like basic, that story. Basically, I said to Billy Gunn, right, you're in front of me in the Rumble, can you commit to the DX song? And he went, aye, what for? I goes, you got another pair of trunks? Aye, what for? Right. You're coming out to DX, I'm coming out next day. I'm a nice man. So I came out with his fucking Mr. Arse pants on. And in the ring was Bob Pauly and Mr. Arse. And I just walked down and uh, fucking the beef just stayed me down and I just turned around and went, suck it. And they just bat the fuck at me. The fact you're calling him Mr. Arse. <laughs> <laughs> um, Favourite entrance themes the new currently in wrestling. Now that is an interesting one, isn't it? Well, Obviously, Jericho's entrance theme is great. Day, I feel seriously. I will hear the sound yeah, I don't like that. I don't really like that. Right. I don't like edges. But I mean, like, the impression of Drew's song, it's hard to do. Um, and then it should go, not a time, I'm out of time. Remember the old man? I think I it should be, like Drew should come out less. Um, it should go, here comes a hailing granny to no, make that shiny funny. Hail, hail, the shout hail. What the hell do we care? That's what it should be. No, Jim Johnson and, and should, be a should, be, should come out and go, cut that, cut that, no. cut that music. In fact, what, what should, you know how Dale Oliver used to, Dale Oliver, he's a know the TNA guy that used to rip off all the songs, you know what I mean? When they went to TNA. No, he should have done a dun 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 <laughs> and there should be a slow when he comes out this slows him up his face right in his eyes set me on fire baby <laughs> he just winks at the woman you know what I mean there should be they're not making enough of, I don't think they make enough Listen, of good looking through us no do you know who's the best looking wrestler in wrestling right now who Angel Gals yeah, that Hector Gals's son sees the day I met him it was JB who told me, he goes, by the way, mate, there's a new guy in TN anymore. You think he's the sexiest guy on the planet? And see when I met him, I was like, he is the sexiest guy on the planet. Uh, he is a good looking guy. There's no doubt about it, he's a good looking guy. Um, but the... They dimples, um, mate. They should be making me about Drew's looks. They should be getting Drew. They should put together a... They should make a faction with Drew that's kind of like a Magic Mike type faction and bring Big Sexy back for it. Bring, bring Kevin Nash back for it. You know what I mean? So you could have Angel Garza, you could have Drew McIntyre, you could have a uh, big sexy Kevin Nash together in a hang me. I kind of strip him. Kind of think Drew would be up for that. I'm the stripping Highlander, and I'm here to take off my sparring. And shout. That's a good accent. Been, you know? <clears throat> That's a good man. accent. Who do you think would win out of fight of Chris Sutton and Drew Galloway? <laughs> I think Drew would win. Aye, fucking right would. But who would win in a fight between fucking Spike Neil Lennon and Neil fucking Bobo Baldi or something Neil, like that? Neil Lennon, Lennon, no, Neil Lennon and Ali McCoist. Fucking no, Neil Lennon would tie Ali McCoist on nuts, man. What the fuck? Neil I've Lennon. trained Ali. Neil Lennon would take Ali out of the back and fucking stretch him until the pips squeaked, mate. 
It'd be like fucking Stu Hart's dungeon, mate. Neil Lennon about there with his big milk bottle body and his fucking ginger heat just tying up wee Ali McCoyce and fucking knots, turning Ali McCoyce into a wee fucking pretzel, mate. Ali McCoyce would just take out his fucking black soaks, red taps, put it in his horn, stick it down Lenny's cup to choked it. Oh, what and he would... A, and then stuck a flute right up his hoop. Oh, what he would run down, slide in. One, two, three. Can you try and count to one, two, three? And Neil Lennon and then, kicks and then then screw, fucking no, two. Screw, no, no, then he screws Super Ali. He goes, one, two, and does the Shane McMahon and does the Vicky's to fucking Ali. <laughs> <laughs> Gaza watching right, can we read the listener stuff here? Because, come on. Yeah, yeah, Gaza watching for ringside with his poly bag. He's checking in on it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny as fuck. Oh, Murray. <laughs> Best entrance team, Scott Murray says, Randy Orton, hands down. Little tiny bill. Says, I actually quite like Bailey's new one. Bailey has really, Bailey's music and her new persona has really grown on me. This kind of like, pff, I can't be bothered with any of this. Right, I quite like it. Scott, Joe's theme tune makes you want to choke, <laughs> makes you want to choke slam the dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, who else is good here Chris Murdoch says go to be Jericho's Judas theme just a great tune that gets the crowd going special mention as well for Kinky Party's theme oh wait James Ramsey who if this is James Ramsey if he's Stevenson shout out mate he was in my science class at school he's saying Bobby Road Glorious that is a fucking tune Glorious Stephen John says, Jones is a really good one sorry Alistair Blacks <laughs> well it's Alistair Blacks again Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> 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 Black runs about. Just <laughs> in a fucking Premier Inn, man, with a pair of soaps on and a fucking fluffy dust up, trying to fucking chase some cunt. Stephen says, Ask her because every time I hear it, I can see a sex montage for a shite American Netflix series. Read out Xander Somerville's and that'll be it. Okay, Xander Somerville says, Gredo's like a prayer, always gets the place jumping. Q, Gredo's smug wee coupon. Let's see your smug wee coupon. Life is a mystery. Everyone can st- Alexa, play like a prayer by Madonna. Uh, Alexa, play like a prayer by Madonna. Alexa, volume eight. Alexa, what's that? Play Like a Prayer by Madonna. I beat you. That was it, that was the start. Was it? Hi. I've, I've got it here too. Alexa, stop. You're making an R6, I've got it here. Listen That's even the right version of my song. It's no. a, another band that uses it. This is a shite version. She's shite at it, isn't she? Uh, you know who's the best at it? Michelle McManus. She was brilliant at it. We are laughing at it. She was fucking... Type in Michelle McManus' Gredo entrance, it'll give you gooses. She sings the last. Uh, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Was it, Alexa, stop. Was it Michelle Could... McManus that rifted, or was it you that rifted? <sighs> <from you Michelle. laughs> Alexa, pause. Alexa, pause Graham's song. Alexa, pause Gredo's music. Alexa, pause. <laughs> Have you got a skill set for Alexa so that, for Gredo's music? Aye. So does every Alexa say, if I say, Alexa, play Gredo's music, no, it listen, to, listen to this part. Listen to this part. Alexa, Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? Here's something I found on reference.com. No, stop. No, shut up. Alexa, stop. Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? Alexa, who is Grado? Greg Estrasa was an early... Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? 11. Alexa. 11. Who is Robert Florence? Oh. Alexa, stop. Robert Flum, Alexa. Scottish presenter, Basta! Writer most popularly known for starring in the popular BBC comedy sketch show Bernie Stown. What? Alexa, stop! Hey, hold on, let me, because I get, and this is my party trick, and it's not doing it. Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? 
Here's something I found on reference. No, fuck off. <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> stop. Maybe they've deleted you, mate. No, to, uh, no. Alexa, it. who is Graham Stevely? Here's something I found. Oh, my God, it's no dent. This is such a rich... Alexa, Alexa, stop. Alexa, who is Graham Stevely? Founder of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. What's that doing that for? That's my party today. <laughs> Alexa. Alexa, stop. Stop. <laughs> Alexa, who is Grado the wrestler? Oh, no, it's not, it's right. <laughs> Alexa. Alexa. I've done that half. Alexa. Who is Grado the wrestler? Here's something I found on the web. According to bloodyelbow.com, I champion wrestler Gregor Gillespie headline. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, stop. <laughs> Alexa. Alexa, who is Grant Dunbar? <laughs> <laughs> Alexa. According to UCS. Alexa, stop. Alexa. Who is Graham Stevely? Here's something I found. On no, you fucking bitch! Shut the fuck up! Stop bullying me! Stop, Alexa! Stop! Right, this is one more time. Right, and then we're gonna say bye because I do this every who's paid in the box. Eleven. Eleven. Alexa, who is Graham Stevely? Here's something I found on reference.com. This can get the fuck. Right, what does it say? What does it say it's normally? It's seen Stephen Graham. I'm not here to fucking front an actor. Right, move on with us now. We get to the interview. What does it I'm normally not happy. do? What does it normally do? It goes, Graham Stevely is an actor from Stevenson who has been in Scott Squad and Impact Wrestling. And now it's not doing it. Now I'm embarrassed. So, so I need somebody next week to fucking send in a sound bite to John, the producer. Get in there, Alexa. To fucking put me over. If no, I'm quitting the fucking show. Maybe they've just deleted you from no, Wikipedia you or something. Up, mate. Mate, I'm Maybe on it. Right, right, I'm on it. I'm Wikipedia. fucking on it. I'm on Alexa. Okay. Let's let's uh, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Now let's introduce one of ICW's breakout stars. He's been in a few with myself. He's been at Shug's house party. Even Rab, yourself, Bonliston, that was on, a, on Alexa two minutes ago. Even he's got stuck in about Ravy Davy as well when uh, they uh, jumped to ring as the quality police. That was brilliant, by the way. I was I was doing in the corner on notes, man. It was brilliant. Let's <laughs> welcome the fresh prince of Dramoin Square. It's Ravy Davy. What's happening, Troops? How you doing? How are you doing, man? You, mate, I <laughs> look, we listen for anybody that's just listening to this. We're looking at him on video here, and he's out in his back. The sun is shining. It's looking uh, beautiful sunny there. Govan. Sunny Govan, you having a you having a good time there? Are you enjoying this pandemic, mate? Uh, no, no enjoying it per se, you know what I mean. But I'm fucking about twelve seasons at a football manager, man, and just pure wrestling with me, man, every day. You know what I mean? How's your game oh. of football manager going? That's uh, it's not bad. Language. I'm just up to the Premier League. Brilliant, brilliant. What a game, by the way. Good luck with that, by the way. Eh? I'm saying good luck to him in football manager. You know what I mean? It's a hard game. Do you ever play role football manager, Grado? No? Me? Nah, I can't be fucked with it. Nah. You're too boring, mate. You need to sit because you don't actually get to watch football. I can't no boring, mate. Boring. It's I'm exciting. into computer games. I don't do that. The, 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 the best game I played was Battleships when fucking Sky Digital. That's what I done. <laughs> Kevin, Sky you Digital, that. remote control? Ah, you can play Battleships, so that's about yeah, the best that's I've done. Old school, old school, mate. So, Davey, tell us, tell us about your path, man. Tell us about your path, how you get into the path, game. Brother. The game, man, the game of professional wrestling. Tell us how you get yeah. in, man. Well, basically, I, I, get, I started watching wrestling when I was four with my cousin, uh, who stayed next door to us, but I wasn't pure big into it. I just watched it because he watched it. And then when my mum died, uh, I just kind of got engrossed to it. It was mm-hmm. like... It was my, what's it called, my, my escape through the alley, you know what I mean, obviously I learned about it, time as a wee guy because of that, and then when mm. I never watched all these big superheroes, these people that were larger in life, it just made me, it made me escape from it, and then I, I just started to love wrestling, and my, my, my wee nan, I seen that, so she let jump on it, and she'd let spend all her money on buying me the pay-per-views, keeping me up at night, like watching all this stuff like that, buying all the figures, everything, you know what I mean, I was just, I was <laughs> spot on and I didn't oh, know that, that came over, I thought like, we just had a magic uh, money to it back, but my nana was just basically skinning herself to try and keep me happy, you know what I mean? Uh, so buying your power slam and all that? What? Buying I got your power slam? Buying your power slam, getting all the videos and stuff like that. She got me a mad, she got a mad dodgy cable uh, rig up so that I had all like, the WCWs and ECWs and all that and my hook ring, you know what I mean? All that stuff, man, I could watch all that, it was class, man. 
And and, yeah, and you get a lot. You were allowed to stay up and watch your pay per views as they were happening. Aye, he's always let me stay at school on a Monday. Not mean oh, so. Oh, mate, he's been oh, yeah, Of course, he was allowed to stay at the fucking school on a Monday watching the wrestling. No, you're all, talking. All that stuff. Not I mean, obviously. So that was just why I ended up pure. I, I loved it more than anything. Not I mean, always wanted to be a wrestler. And then obviously when my nana passed away, I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna go and do it. I seen the great, I seen the documentary grade and all that. And I was like, ah, fuck it, man. If he can do it, he's fat on me and I'm funny on him. If he can do it, I can do it. I'm gone for this. Yeah, obviously, I'm no, not. I mean, I, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, he's a bit funny on me, and I'll give him his due. Yeah, he no, is, no, I'm Dave, you, you've uh, you've fed me a few good lines before, but, but, but I, I want to get you up for something, but because I remember yeah. you done an interview with the paper. Now this is during the time when I was, uh, you know, in Impact Wrestling, and uh, I was getting a couple of bounce checks. This cunt goes on the fucking paper and tells everybody I drive around a Range Rover. I'm trying to keep that on the download. Right. I'm I'm doing I'm I'm doing promo videos with country <laughs> fucking fiestas and that to make you know because people, oh, people like bad, the, what do you man, call it the underdog. Yeah, so you drive a Range Rover, Grado like, ah, I, I see Grado driving a Range Rover. I'm like, fucking tell me, fuck that man. Anyway, I don't have that on. Anyway, I imagine because, driving uh, a Range Rover, man. I was well, I apologize because so. my big thing is no being a grass, not being enough stuff to get into the fucking papers. <laughs> you just smoke it, you, you just smoke it, you dick. Oh, no, no, who's the grass fuck's sake got in my podcast? I'm getting on, I'm getting on, I'm getting on. So, so you're, in terms of your training, Davey, like, who, who <laughs> trained you? Who's your trainer? Yeah, well, my trainer's not, we're at uh, uh, the GPW, so it was Wolfgang, uh, Red Lightning, uh, BT Gun, Jester, Adrian before he passed away, and then obviously the old guys are into and that and all. Mm-hmm. Because that's what absolutely the day, the day that I, the day before I started training, there was a show in Govan, a wrestling show in Govan, doing the Pierce Institute, and the, the GPWA were doing a show in off and days for uh, Drew McDonald, but that was up in the like Dennis or something. I was like, I'm obvious, I'm going to one in Govan, not I mean, that's what Dado is, not I mean, I'm going to that one. Aye. And then after that, I've obviously been a big mark, I'm like, up to it half time, like, going to him. It's like, me, I'm going to be a wrestler, not me, I'm going to start training the more that. He's just obviously looking like, who's this daft cunt? Not me, I like didn't that. remember you, but... I know, he did to be fair, but I'm like, oh, we're going to be a tag team, not me, you, Degeneration Greggs, not me, Death Rally. <laughs> and obviously, what you a couple of months later, when I started that, we ended up tagging like, the girls, Degeneration Greggs and the CCC. Aye, we, that was cool, wasn't it? We, we, did we know how like, Saucy's rolls and used it as like, the fucking DX mad story thing? <laughs> That was good, didn't it? That's so, a nice wee story, that, isn't it? And what age were you at the time? What age were you at the time when you started training? Uh, 21. 21. So a bit Aye. later, not I mean, that's the one thing I said, man, I love little bits, not I mean, she done everything for me, but she never got the internet. She just didn't understand the internet, so I could never check out a wrestling school, not until basically the wee bit. The, so I started seeing them, and that was when she was no well. So I, I couldn't go then, you know what I mean? And then obviously, as soon as she passed away, just went right into it. Went to the GPWA, there was a, I went to about 80 training sessions with no going to one, not I me. Mean, I just kept going and going and going. And then I just, I, I, it was just, I, it was my drive, not I me. Mean, I wanted to just make it, not something to make her proud, not I me. Mean, at the end of the day, something to make her proud. Aye. Wrestling like the hydro. And did you take to it right away? Did you take to it right away? Did you feel like Aye, a, man, I can do that? Team. So obviously, I'd, I've always, like, it sounds daft, I always had wanted to be a wrestler, but a lot, of, I, I was always unfit, not I me. Mean, I was never, I was never like, I'm a mad athlete or anything like that. I, I, play, I was just captain of the football team that, but that was me because I could go a good square goal and I would always look back on my pals and that. Not, nothing, nothing to do because I fucking, I'm good at football. And then I end up just, so I thought that was my biggest, that was my biggest barrier, getting past the fitness stuff. But once I go there, man, I was just taking care of like fish out of water. And there was people that was, I was doing all the drills fine though. And it wasn't, the, I was managing the, the fitness side of fine. Then obviously I started taking it more serious and I started trying to get myself fit. Aye. Aye. So, so it was the grass started. and the juice. What? So it was the grass and the juice. No, I've never put it that. Fuck's sake, <laughs> I'm that on. Going, <laughs> you're a bit big on that. <laughs> could get it easily, fuck's sake, but no, that's no my style. <laughs> yeah, I bet you could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I miss he's not weaning there, fuck's sake, not weaning, do I? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. No, Ravi, what I like about you is you're real and you're, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's the most believable character that's on the show, do you know what I'm saying? Because I he is who he is. So it's in government, know what I mean? Exactly, and you're who you are, and that's like one of the biggest things that you're in wrestling. It's a believability and believing in your own character, and you've fucking nailed it in one. You think, uh, you think there's a thing here, and uh, particularly with Scottish wrestlers, right? You think when you come from a kind of working class background, right? Like you did Grado, right? And you did Davey, right? You come from these kind of work class areas and stuff like that. You, you kind of marry a natural in the promo side of things, like, because you've kind of. If you're if you're growing up in the areas, I think you end up you need to have a bit of the kind of gift of the gab anyway. You need to be able to talk yourself out of a situation or into a situation or through a situation. So I mean, because the gyms don't make it. 
Aye. I mean, to be fair, some of the best promos I've ever heard is after my mate's John Kyung, who's not, I mean. Exactly. It's like, mate, when I, when I worked in the fire brigade control room, I used to go to the pattern after all women. See what I'm like, just like random things. Right. That some woman would go, Oh, I was being holy, but you can admit it was a big jumbo jet. I was seen the size of this big jumbo jet, and I'm going, Jumbo jet, I'm using that man. And I was like, Next week, I've done a promo, I'm gonna come in at you like jumbo jet, jumbo jet, and just wee things like that. Aye, you aye, aye. Just get wee fucking lines off older cunts or just put with part as brown, just, just fucking put aye. it in. And, and use well, it wrestling because nobody else does it because it's all I'll see you there this Saturday and I'm the best wrestler and you're going to receive an ass within of a lifetime fuck me that is cringy as shit and it's unoriginal and it's pathetic he's Gredo's in some mood today by the way he's, he's gone he's gone in rants he's, sh- he's shoot it's like a shoot video going to end up with Gredo fun. today it's amazing um, aye. Aye, so, so Davey you, you've, you're in the game right you're in the game now you're there you're at the game right and I've been asking this to a lot. I was speaking to Davy Blaze last week about this as well. He says, so you're there, right? You're doing it. You fought, you wrestled Gradle, quite a high-profile match and all that, right? And now everything's shut down. It's all stopped. How does that feel to be, like, kind of in uh, the mix now? And then suddenly uh, everything's shut down for, like, however long? See, see the thing about everything's shut down, man? It's brutal, right? It probably everybody's got to say this, but I actually was getting my shit together, man. Oh, Heavy. No. You just start a full-time job. My pal's not doing groundwork and stuff like that, so I'm actually going to have a good bit of paper behind me so I can invest in the rest and that. Start yeah, and you're a card for once, I've always told you. In fact, you go that track, track, track is banging, track is yeah, banging. Track is now, got to buy Mary Amy, they're expensive, so I yep. need to get a good job so I can buy Mary Amy, cost four ton, I mean, that's no fucking, for, a, <laughs> not, yeah. for, for the rest of the tyre, but no, I mean, so I need to get a few Mary Amy, so I've got the job not sorted, then I went to the gym now, oh, I've, I've got a new gym, but no, I mean, I've got no the same one I've always been got it for ages, I've been got it one for a, a up to tune, not I mean, stuff like that, so I'm actually going to invest in that as well, and then, uh, what else was it? Oh, I, I, in fact, I, I've got all my holidays, not booked everything, not I mean, it was all. Oh, mate. Oh, you're what a gimmick we done it. Hey, how good was the gimmick we done it at Margarito's family bash? Oh, well, mate, no, look at this. See my next holiday, South Africa. Virgin might be gone bust. So the last two companies have went bust. I've got holidays booked oh with them, man. God. Oh. But tell, us, tell the story <laughs> what we done. The idea we had fucking brilliant. When it, what was the story well, again? Well, I meant to go to Tenerife with uh, Thomas Cook, and then Thomas Cook went bust. So, eh... Uh, Basically, we've done the Battle Royal thing where the winner gets a uh, five grand. And obviously, I'm coming out like that. I'm going to win this because I need to win this. You just want it to, obviously, you just want it to spend or put away, save up. I need to take my family on the holiday. I promised them that Tom, Thomas Cook stole from me. But obviously, we panted it up. No, I, no, I mean, let's have come out like I want to tell you a sad story. And they've went, oh, I was like, even sadder than that. <laughs> oh, God, that stuff, no, he's good, man. Because the best thing about it was before every, everybody that was on that show was like, ah, they all wanted to do the, the panto stick, and I'm like, ah, I like getting all. But I've only, as you were saying, Rab, I've just started the game, so I can't just be going like, ah, I'm doing the panto bit, not I mean. But Grado had managed to sort it and said he wanted the panto bit for me, so I'm like, yes, man. Aye, and you nailed it, man, because you know what? Every, every single family in that uh, match, like watching that match, was like, I'm on that boy, you win. I'm on that boy to go to Tenerife. And as soon as he wins the Battle Royal, the place erupted. Ravy Davies' boy gets on the stage, man. They're jumping about, we're going to Tenerife, we're going to Tenerife. Brilliant, brilliant bit of wrestling. That, that's what you get me coming to those big family wrestling bash, you know what I'm saying? Aye, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. I'd love to come to that show sometime, Grado. I'd love to get involved in it. I'd love to get involved in it sometime, mate, like you promised me. But, you know, we'll see. Maybe a pandemic, maybe another side of the pandemic, you'll, you'll, you'll get me involved in. tell me I had to catch him outside the first one, not me when he's getting the ring belt and all that, man. Grado, get his own it, man. Come on. Aye, well, she's been up to. <laughs> <laughs> um, aye, so I was nice, uh, I was nice getting involved with that thing at uh, Fear and Loathing. Way you did, it was good to get involved in that match, and it's good. You're always you're a personable guy, mate. You're a fucking personable guy. He came, Grado. Do you know he came up to me after the match and he was like, "Me and you should do a match together." He said, nah, that'd be money. No, I mean, me money. and you should do a match together. Like a I, he's pack. one to one against Shell Suit, Bob, fucking Bobby Carlyle, every cunt, Cracker, they, Robico, I, Train. He knows they can of go though. He knows that I can. No, go. you can't, mate. He knows that I can fucking. When you get that Scott Steiner thing that you. Hang with me, we should just do the old Jericho versus Laura Celebrities. Hang with me versus Rav Florence, Shell Suit, Bo, Rob (laughs) Kalei, all them, man. I'll get it. Actually, should. That actually would be great. That would be brilliant for you. This is your. Everyone in our notes are cunting. Hold on. This this would be assuming that you would get past me, mate. You wouldn't necessarily get past (laughs) (laughs) me. Well, you would be the last one, Rav. Kick my head in, didn't you know what I mean? So. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, when Shell Suit, Bo, I can't remember who bumped him. Um. 
he actually taken the best bump out the whole fucking roster. I'm not joking. The way he sold it, I was like, man, panel legend, panel wrestling, the similarities. <laughs> Honestly, he put some half the wrestlers to shame. Couldn't sort of fucking phoning in, he's fucking bumping oil again. It was brilliant. So, Davey, what, what, what you want to do once everything gets back to normal, once everything gets back up and running, what's, what, what are you hoping to do in ICW? Yeah, or, be, or, I be, keep... or in wrestling in general, what are you wanting to do? Where well, do I be? Yeah, basically, right, it's, I like... it's not the thing I've told many people <clears throat> uh, like, openly. I, obviously, a lot of people know about it, but it's not the thing I've like, put out there for like, the public or that. But uh, what I want to do is I want to just be... Uh, as big as I can get in Scotland and in the UK, because I kind of know I probably won't be able to make it to the States and like that because my past and that, know what I mean? So I've only like, I want to become a legendary, I want to be a mainstay, I want to be like, the greatest wrestler in ICW, like uh, accomplishments wise and all that, because like, I'm, everybody else is chasing their big contracts and all that, but I know, obviously I'm never going to stop chasing that, but I, I kind of know the back of my head it's probably never going to come because what I've done is a stupid people, you know what I mean? So. I just want to make sure I can solidify myself as one of the best in the company that managed to give me a... Uh, mm-hmm. The thing I always wanted to do is a wee boy, you know what I mean? I wanted to be a wrestler, you know, ICW have helped me do that and live it a lot of dreams. So I want to be back by being the wrestler that goes to ICW all the time and all the companies in Scotland and up to the UK and just accomplish much I can in there, you know what I mean, with these companies. Cause Goosebumps, mate. That's really like, good. Honestly, so that's fucking... Really honestly, that's, that's, that's a fucking brilliant answer. answer. That's a, a really, really good answer, mate. That was really, really cool. That's honest and fucking respect to you for believing you. And that, 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 that's what do you think, Rob? I think definitely. I mean, I think it's that everybody, have, everybody's get past. You know what I mean? Everybody's get past, and everybody's get stuff that they've that they've done in the past that they regret. You know what I mean? And obviously, some the difference is just that some people have, you know, have stuff that. Um, I mean, I've, I mean, I've got, I've got a number of things in the past that I really regret doing and stuff what like decisions take, I've made. Do you take a wee dry off fag? I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a thing, though, right? This is my point: is that everybody's got this. Everybody's got stuff in the past that they regret, or like wee secrets or wee things that they don't. You know what I mean? They don't want to talk about. And I think the best you can do, the, the, the beautiful thing, is just being able to to move on past the things and be because people are just a, they're a work in progress all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Work in progress, and I think. Like in your case, Davey, it's like already I think you're a, a cracking role model for people who you've managed to turn, you know, what is your background and your experience into a, into a character that you're now using to entertain people, you know what I mean? Which is just, which is one of the most positive ways you can Ooh. approach it, you know what I mean? You should be going to Pullman to Dane Talks to folk and fucking, I, I do you know what I mean? Going to schools and shit like that. The thing that I was actually saying, I mean, obviously I first started getting this, it was all me, 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 that now, but see now, it's more the fact that I, like, I'm a heavy hero in Govan and stuff like that. Not I mean, like I walk about Govan, not those wee guys going pure mental when they see oh, me. Oh, I man, like there's tons of folk. Stuff like that. Like, you know, David, David. Well, like, I take that. I take that. I take that role more serious than anything. Not I mean, it's like man, I'm trying yep. to show these wee guys through Govan. You know, just you know, just something fairly. Like, you know, just like a lot of people probably just think of them as wee scumbags and stuff like that, just because they're wee boys for a place that they're born. Not I mean, you know, their fault. Not just uh, care for their belt. Not I mean, mm-hmm. and I want to be able to show them that they can actually go on with their lives and not just a like a good job. Like, go to a school and become a joiner or something like that because your pastoral care teacher told you. Like, actually go and live your dreams and actually do what you want to do since you were four years old, you know what I mean? And no, have to do what people have told you you, you need to do kind of thing. You know what I mean? Aye. Aye. Aye, David, that's been brilliant. Because there must have been points in your life where you thought to yourself, there's no way I'll ever be a wrestler. You know oh, I mean? no, I definitely... But before I was like... Well, I wanted to be since I was 40, about 14, and then obviously growing up and... I just start like I started gang fighting. That was basically my wrestling. Not I mean, like started like fighting with people, not the streets and stuff. That was the, the replacement because I knew oh, I'm not going to get into wrestling. So let's just go and fight and represent my area that I stay in. Not I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's just um, hope you keep the heat and don't turn into fucking New Jack. Not I mean. Oh no, don't be that. No, don't lie. Not I mean. That's, that's just <laughs> bumming you up. No, but the thing is, I was never a bad. I was never a bad boy. I just no. never had anything today. So I went and hung about the wrong crowd. Not I mean, kind yeah. thing. It's easy done, that's man. It's about, you know what I mean? I just to say to me, an audible, like, basically, if you could just get him doing something, that's how I got a job, no, up when I, when I, uh, obviously, when I got, a, when I turned 16, I just, I, basically, my social workers go to an apprenticeship because if they knew I was staying out of trouble, I would be fine, kind of. Are you a grafter? You definitely also, are a grafter, mate. What age, what age are you now, Davey? 26. I mean, see, see the person you're at 26, right? The person you're at 26 is nothing like the person you're in your fucking teens, or even no. the person you're in at 36, or like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just, it's a constant, 
it's a constant changing thing, man. It's a really kind of positive thing you've done for yourself, and also you're good at it as well. You know, what I mean, it's not like it's a, it's not like it's just a thing where you you kind of went right. I want to do this now, and I'm going to focus on this. And you get a lot of people like that who have been through some hard times, and then they kind of shift things up and they find a new direction to go or whatever. And but they're no. It isn't always the case that they actually turn out to be gifted at the thing they're doing as well. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's good to see. I mean, I, really, you're still you're still pretty young, man, in this game. You know what I mean? So I think you, it's going to be interesting to see what does happen for you, man, and where you will go next. Because I think, I think there's still a lot of great times to come in the wrestling industry in this country. You know what I mean? I think uh, it's going to be it's going to be exciting to see how how it all pans out for you, man. Fingers crossed. This is getting too emotional. <laughs> I want to ask him the ten count. That was my daughter just dropped. What did you drop? Try to do an interview here, and my thirteen-year-old daughter's just just dropping things. Yeah, thirteen-year-olds dropping things. I'm heavy surprised to be fair, my seven-year-old hasn't came out one shit. No, I mean he's been pure buzzing and all since he held. Obviously, I was doing it. Is that why you keep looking back? I keep, I keep thinking I'm hearing them. I. Do you want to do the ten count? Is there anything we think we should, John? We should wrap up on before we go to the ten count. Uh, no, I think that's no, been a fucking great interview, mate. No, that's fine, mate. That's absolutely I think it's been fine. fucking one of the best. You agree, you two? Aye. Best grab. Aye. 100%. Yeah, yeah, okay. Are we right, doing so the 10 we'll count? Aye. We'll just do it. Right, right. go for it. You might do it. I've got, I've got 19% in my battery left. Right, David, David, we like to ask you 10 count now and again. If, uh, usually, sometimes we get wrestlers on and uh, it gets to the point, I actually kind of burst. Asking them a 10 count of net interest, but I'm actually interested in what you would answer in all these questions. Um, so I'm going to ask you the first wrestling match that you ever watched. First wrestling match I ever watched, uh, it was, remember the Hingway, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? Right, Shamrock, when he slaps his sister or some shit. Whatever the first match on that was, that's the first match I watched because I was four years and a wee bit. And I was I go I go allowed to stay in at my uh, my cousins and stay up for it. That was the first ever one. That Obviously, makes me feel old. You said you were four. The main event show, big show in Stone Cold. Paul White. Aye, it's Paul White. He's the hardest free agent. Yep, yep. Aye, right. That's obviously the one I remember. So. Best match you've wrestled in. <coughs> Best match I've wrestled in. Eh. Hey, tell the truth now. Tell the truth. You can't tell the truth. The there's three. Right, the one I had with Bram uh, the night before the that was brilliant, first actually. show. Brilliant. Uh, the match I wrestled Wolfgang for the ICW World Heavyweight title and the uh, the GUU or something like the university thing. Got a shop there. And then the one I wrestled Gradle in the garage. That what one was that? Was that my first one? Aye, uh, the first one. Aye, uh, uh, that's one of my favourite matches. Uh, that's definitely one of my favourite matches. Uh, uh, favourite opponent? Favourite opponent? Aye, probably you in the punch. Really? Aye. Favourite wrestler of all time? Eh, uh, Shawn Michaels. Favourite tag team? Favourite tag team, the uh, Edge Christian. Favourite finishing move aside for yourselves? Eh, uh, favourite finishing move, probably the... What do you call it? Switch in music. Aye. Favourite promo of all time? Favourite promo? Eh, uh, the Hingway one. What's it called again? Ah. Oh. What, Dusty Rhodes or something? No, 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 don't be daft, don't be daft, don't be daft. Don't uh, be daft. The, it's not really that promo, but the cut angle, it, it make your ankle hurt. I'll make your ankle hurt. Ah, right. Aye. Aye. That was the sexy cut. Sexy cut. Sexy cut. Aye. Aye, that was on, was that one of the documentaries recently? Aye, but it was the one, obviously, with him wrestling uh, Shawn Michaels. And obviously ah, that was that on the, the network. Aye, that was Aye, class. That's fast, what I mean. Favourite mm-hmm. entrance theme? Favourite entrance, Sean Michaels, I don't know what I mean, Heartbreak Kid. Ah, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good one. Favourite ever pay-per-view? Favourite ever pay-per-view? Uh, either Armageddon 2000 or wow. Survivor Series 2002, I think, where Sean Michaels went to belt again, or the... Ah, yeah, yeah that, I like Tiffy Music, that one. I hear a voice say, don't be surprised, it's telling me all these, I oh, love you, you, I hate you, I can't get around you. Right, uh, favourite match of all time? I don't know if that's, I want you've watched. Uh, I see, my ass is brutal, because I've said Sean Michaels for everything, so I think there's something a wee bit different here. Uh, 
I know Mick Foley and uh, Triple H at the Royal Rumble. Rumble, Rumble. that's a good shout, mate. Oh, that's that's one, one of my favourites as well. That's a great shout. Ro- R- Davey, mate, you've been honest, I've been one of my favourite interviews on this show, and I'm not just saying that. I thanks, you know, Davey, for, for coming really on. Honestly, yeah, any, any closing remarks? Uh, no, really no, man. You just caught me a bit of back with this. Not I mean, the big man did shout his earlier on for it, but then I didn't even get my Twitter reply for it, so I didn't even know I was in the Engradle phone. Is, so. Nah, uh, no, but you've, mate, you were honestly, honestly, really, really, really good. I'm going to promote the fuck out this one. For it. Nah, that's pretty much what I'm saying to the boys. <laughs> You I know, good stuff, man. We will get you back at some point. Well, we'll we come, we'll come back, run again. Once we're in, should those will get you in. Sorted, sorted. Tidy, right, Ravy. Thanks very much, my man. All right, take care. Cheers, all the best of the family. Cheers, now, buddy. Right? Cheers, Cheers, buddy. See you later. Cheers, Cheers pal. Bye, bye. Woo! Right, Rab. It's been a great episode, by the way. I thought Ravy David was absolutely brand new, honest. Nice to see him at his back door, lapping up the sun. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Wrestling Daft again. Tuning in. Coming out of your pandemic holes to come and listen to your wee show. Gredo, what a pleasure to be back chatting to you. I think, I think the two weeks that I've been off, the saw just built up inside me, man. I've just wanted to let it out to fuck, you know what I mean? I don't think you've been off for two weeks, though, have you? Only half one week. Aye, what? but it counts as two weeks. It does. It does count Aye. for two weeks, it's right. It's a three. It's a six-pointer, as they say. Five-pointer. Uh, man. So, actually, actually, see, when I think about it, did I actually uh, get to miss talking about the shite that was WrestleMania? Or did we talk about that? No, we talked about uh, WrestleMania and it wasn't oh, right. shite. Alright, we did see my memories, fuck it. It wasn't yeah. shite though. Um, but, uh, Wrestling is shite now, that's why we're just watching all the old stuff. This is just day with the day on BBC Scotland showing the old uh, cup finals like the Rangers and Celtic <laughs> one for 2002 where Lovercran scores a screamer right at the end. Sorry, I just get uh, get distracted there because you get somebody else taps off in the background of your wee video here, mate, as well doing this. Oh, that, that's, that, that's uh, my brother-in-law there, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he looks more like a wrestler me, put it that way. Aye, he's he's ta- he's taps half there. <laughs> um, what a body! Let me tell you, what a body on him. What a body, brother. He looks like he could he could tie you in a pretzel. Aye, aye that's he my honours. Don't worry. Listen, see if Fit Finley fucking turns up at your house. Get your own lot. He's answering the fucking door. Trust he's me. He's answering the door. Listen, everybody. I'm, this is where I'm self isolating. So I've got it. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening. Thanks so, but uh, please stay safe. Please get stay a safe. mask guys, on. Guys, if you're guys, going listen to the listen, listen to Robert. If you're going to the co, stay two metres apart for everybody. I'm worried that I've maybe caught the virus now because everybody was acting like an arsehole in the co. Um, but I want you to stay safe. I don't want you to go through it. What, what about you, Grado? Are you, are you feeling all right? Are you feeling all right? Yeah, I'm ready to do it, but... What? Up the road! It's yourself. Yeah, but oh, that's yourself. All the three, two, jumbo jet. Hold on, one more I'll time. come and get you in a big jumbo jet. I'll oh, think so. Oh, I fucking took that off the knees right there. Watch this, hold on. I mean, I've literally fucking threw it off the wall. Oh, Alexa, oh, one minute. who is Graham Steveley? Stephen Joseph Graham is an English <laughs> Alexa, yes, bro, who good. is Graham Steveley? Alexa, stop. Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? Alexa. No, wait there, shut up, hold on, Bridget. Sorry for saying shut Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? Alexa, who is Graham Steveley? Fuck me. No, I'm fucking good. Alexa, <laughs> play fuck. Peg by Steely Dan. Hey, I'm off, man. I'm going to be <laughs> fucking for us, Alexa, after all. Yeah, I'm fucking that bastard. Right, see you later. Woo! Good night, everybody. See you later. Bye Thanks bye. for the show. Farewell, farewell, Good farewell. Bye bye.